This is gonna be an amazing video, and the reason why is, is because we're gonna be doing a little test subject, which is gonna be the Alpha Core Isobear LT120 CPU wall in black. As you can see, Isobear ready with uh, compression fittings that are made by the, that company and could be used from another water cooling solution, which is made by Alpha Core, onto here, as long as it's Isobear ready yeah um in the the test subject obviously the case is a meshify or fractal design meshify s2 case so we want to test this as this is made by an actual water cooling company and they should know what they're doing keeping everything nice and cool with a thermal compound thermal grease whatever you want to call it and uh the good thing about it it can fit all of these sockets so we've got am socket am2 am2 plus am3 am3 plus am4 f fm1 fm2 fm2 plus c32 which i don't even know what that is that's i never heard of that socket or g34 never heard of that one 754 i've heard of 939 i've heard of 940 i've heard of intel socket lg LGA 755, 1156, 755, 151, 1150, uh, 1366, 2011, 2011, uh, dash 3, and 2066 and 604 and 771. 604 I never heard of. But that means it's got you all covered to obviously water cool your stuff and keep it all nice and calm and stuff like that. Anyway, so let's have a look what we get in the box as I haven't done anything with AlphaCool before. So you get your instructions. So basically I'll give you a little quick overview Oh, it's quite nice. Quick overview of what you get and everything like that. And then uh, we're gonna put it obviously on top of the CPU um, and then we're gonna run it stock. If we can push it higher than normal, then we will do. We're gonna have a screen in the background so you can check like real life uh, world results and seeing how much temperatures that we're hitting off this cooler, how well it does and stuff like that. And that'd be quite good. Anyway, the, the instructions are fabulous. I'm not gonna lie, they are pretty uh, They are pretty good. Uh, for a manufacturer like this, I've never done before, it reminds me of Fractal Design, which is quite good, because they're Swedish, and these are German. But the thing is, is that it's really good information right there. Like, you can read what you wanna read in there. It's only got uh, three different languages though. So we've got English, German, and French. Oh, it's only a 120. People were like, oh, it's a 120. How's this going to keep it cool? I'm trying to wonder the same thing, but this is the whole point. It's a test experiment to see how well it does. So, okay, it's got two fans. So we're going for push and pull, I guess, on that. And then it's got all the stuff here. So we're going to get this all out and have a good old look at it. All right, so in the box, you get Alpha Cool's uh, thermal grease. And this is actual thermal grease, so it's a little syringe. So we're gonna put that on the CPU. We get the screws that fit to the retention bracket. Uh, I'm not sure which one's Intel and which one's uh, Ryzen or AMD, I should say. We've got some long screws there for the fans and then uh, short ones uh, to attach to the top there, depending on how you're sorting it out. Then we've got a fan, a fan splitter. Uh, this is the AMD bag. I can tell that straight away. So that's the bracket for AMD and they clip together. They've got some massive screws in there and it's got a little bit of instructions on that side. And then we've got the Intel part, which we're gonna be using. It's got 9900K in there. So we've got a retention bracket that goes to the back with 3M adhesives that stick to the motherboard. You don't have to do that, but if you want to, you can do. And obviously sliding these up and down will mean that it can fit to every single motherboard. So that's pretty good. Well, the majority of motherboards anyway. I'm guessing this is the bracket that goes around um, the CPU block. And then these are some long screws. Not too sure where they go yet. So I'll work that out, it says Intel though. Screws there, and then these are the fan screws. So what we're gonna do is just get this out of the bag. It feels really, it's got that flexi uh, tubing on here. So this is this definitely flexible. You can definitely get away with bending it into little tight uh, positions. So I'm guessing if you were gonna use a mini ITX case, this would be quite good. You've got quite a bit of bend there. Um, so these are where you can undo these barbs or uh, compression fittings. I should say compression fittings, because that's what they are. And then you undo that, and then obviously you'll be able to um, transfer to a bigger radiator or whatever you wanna do. And this is a quick disconnect as well. So you can undo this and then a little bit of coolant will probably come through 
or not. So have like a little bowl ready for you so it doesn't like spill in the desk or on your components. And then you've got other compression fittings right there. These are 90 degree angle ones. So that looks pretty cool. Nice thick braided cable, which is a DC power connector. So you have to go in the bus and obviously control that, but it's not as much control as what you do get from PWM. And then we've got a massive copper plate. Look how thick that copper plate is. What the frick? All right, look at, that is a good like, Three, three mil thick of copper plate on that. So, and copper freaking screws. <laughs> oh my God. They're going all out here, aren't they? This looks, and it looks like copper uh, fins as well, because it's getting a little bit rusty in there. So that's pretty cool. Alpha cool logo there. Anyway, this feels quite weighty and feels, it feels decent. It doesn't feel cheap. But anyway, let's get this um, set up inside the case and let's get the temperatures going. Let's, let's really get this done. As you can see, we've got these screws here. There should be nine of them. Oh no, it should be eight of them now because I put one away. Uh, so you've got four for the front of the fan and four the other fan. So we're gonna go for a push-pull configuration, I suspect. So what you can see is it's pulling hot air out and then the other fan we're pulling from the back and exhausting it out. So one's gonna be here, one's gonna be um, on the other side and then push it straight out to the back. We've also got the screws there. This is for 775 all the way to 1151 socket. And these are the 2011 or 2011-3. This is the bracket that kicks, connects together um, underneath the, well, between the copper plate and the actual DC water um, pump that's in there. It's on a ceramic plate and it's got fins and stuff inside there. So normally what a normal custom water cording loop would have, uh, so you buy the CPU water block and it'll have these like fins in there. It's where you pass through little channels for the coolant. And if you've got crappy coolant and it gets blocked, then obviously it starts to overheat and then he starts getting the system all clogged up. Anyway, in here is obviously the splitter fans right there. So I can connect these two fans together and then have it through one header. Would be nice to have a longer one, but we don't have one. Then obviously in that bag, AMD and all that sort of stuff. So we don't need that. So we'll put that over there. All the stuff that we need is right here and we don't need the 2011 stuff. So move those screws there. So they do hook you up quite a bit. But anyway, let's put the bracket on there, on the back. That's the first thing we'll do. So we just measure up the holes, get them in there. So that's secured to the back. Now what we want to do is get the fans ready because this, this is the way that you put the fan in. So that's how it's going to be inside the actual case. Let's hopefully this will fit. So now we want to situate the fan exactly the same way. But now we're going to put it up here. That's not the easiest thing to do. I know what I'm going to do actually. Put it like so. That baby is installed. Just got to get the cables going through for cable management. All right, so now we've got the last one, which is the DC cable. So I'm gonna just try and thread this through the back and then thread it into the pump at the top of the motherboard, which is, I think it's, which one is it? It's one of these. Top one. And then we get it in there. And plug it in somehow. There we go. 
That is the Eisenbeer LT Air for Cool installed. Yeah, it looks spontaneous. I don't know how I would do it. But yeah, if you undo this, you're definitely going to get a couple of drops out of it. But then it's good that you can obviously put a graphics card, water block all through there and all kinds of stuff. Let's see what it does though. Let's put it back together. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a bench test. Um, well, a, synth a synthetic bench test to just run across on there. We all know that synthetic bench benchmarks are not real world results, but it gives you a base mark and it kind of tests how much the performance can go up to, but not no one's going to really be using it like that unless you're going to be using it for video editing. Obviously, intense game graphics, CAD work, all that sort of stuff will definitely run the CPU quite hot. Let's uh, see how it does anyway. This is the first time I'm putting it on there, so let's see what the temperature is going to be like. So, system stability test. And at the moment, on the 9900K, we're at... Where are we? CPU, the lowest, the lowest of the low. 45 freaking degrees. What? Motherboard's at 39. Everything else is like this, um, the SSD uh, 970 Pro one terabyte drive. Uh, that's in there as well. That's 38 degrees. I'm seeing the highest of 47, but obviously it's running idle. So if I move the mouse a bit, it goes up to 55 degrees with a little spike. So what I'm going to do is run this for 15 minutes to half hour, just so I get a baseline. So here we go. And everything's stock. And we're going to stress the GPU. And we're stressing the memory, stressing the cache, stressing uh, the FPU, and stressing the CPU. And already CPU throttling max at 12% overheating detected. Uh, CPU is running at 100% straight away. And the computer's been on for about 10, 15 minutes, so it's warmed up. But let's see what happens though, it might just shut down. So we're now at 30% uh, CPU throttling. Uh, lowest CPU core point is 89 degrees, and the other one was at 100. But what it does is when it starts to hit throttle, it starts to slow down. But it's at 100% CPU usage though. CPU, uh, blah, 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 let's see. We're hitting averages of 87.1, 82.6, 82.9, 84.4, 84.9. Um, and peaks are obviously 100. Uh, next one down 99. And then obviously minimums between 45, 42, 43, 42, 41. And then current, <laughs> it's running at 100, 98, 97, 98, and 93. I am starting to think the CPU is definitely overclocked. I hope it is anyway. Because if it's overclocked, that means that it's doing pretty well. So let's leave it for half hour and let's see what happens. Well, we're back, and um, technically it's meant to be 15 minutes to, 15 minutes to a half hour, but we decided to go a whole hour just to see what it's like, just to do a benchmark, because when you want to have the best CPU and you want to have the best speed and all this sort of stuff, then you normally have a benchmark. But is this real world results? No, it's not. So technically, I'm gonna start playing a game and see how hot it gets, see if there's any spikes and stuff like that. But you can see that the, um, the motherboard's doing a good job keeping the, um, the motherboard cool and the NVMe. Uh, CPU's like, there's two cores at 100 and the rest at 94, but CPU throttling max at 50% overheating detected right now with 100% usage. So technically, if I was going to render something, it'd probably run pretty hot. Now, these fans are just running with cool air straight through, so everything is pretty perfect i haven't got any fans at the top though now if i stop this this out and look we, we've done a sound test so like technically that's how loud, loud it runs with two big fans or what two 120 mil fans for a radio and it's only a 120 and it's literally killing it i know other things will just die from this this is doing all right 
So if I hit stop, it should start to peak down. There we go. It's dying down. We already dropped down to the 60s now, 60 degrees. That's cool. Right. So I'll leave this running in the background and I'll just quickly uh, see if I can get a game to work. So technically, I'm playing the game and it's like the highest of uh, 63 degrees right now. So it shows it's playable. My CPU usage is at 16% at the, the max and 13%. See, that's the maximum sort of degrees you're going to get from that. So, that that is me gaming right now. And at the moment, it's kind of just just right. You, you, I'm not idle. I'm obviously playing and doing my thing. And those are the degrees you're going to ha have. And this is real world results. So yes, this is pretty good CPU cooler. Um, CPU cooler? <laughs> AIO liquid cooling solution. Anyway. Um, Real world results compared to benchmarks is different. So from my point of view, what I like about this um, is the fact that it's been able to not cut out after just running like for a, an extreme benchmark. So I was getting a load of heat from the RX 2080 Ti. Um, RAM obviously was next to the MOSFETs, next to the, the pump, the AIO. Um, cool air has been dragged into the front of the case, so that does help because it's got a mesh on the front there, so cool air dragging over the top and keeping things cool, but you do need to have extra fans when you're doing this sort of stuff. But it's a push and pull configuration and it's going straight out of the back and there's been no problem, it, it works, it literally works. Now if I was doing rendering, obviously that would go up a bit, but it wouldn't be going up as much as the benchmark. But really, I really wanna to check to see if this uh, graphics card is um, overclocked or not. Uh, it's not overclocked. So it's just that base clock. So if you were going to overclock, then look at Alpha Cool's next bigger range, and then you can obviously add to that. But that's still pretty decent. That is pretty decent. That is a top of the range, 9900K CPU, basically the fastest CPU on the planet uh, for gaming. And it's keeping it, it well, it, it handled its business at 120 mil, obviously two fans, push and pull. But lighted in through the bus, 51 degrees, not too bad. Memories, not overclocked or anything like that. So yeah, if you like this video, thought it was helpful and in-depth enough, leave your comments down below and also share like crazy. Subscribe like crazy and get other people to subscribe like crazy if they're into this sort of stuff. It's nice to be able to know these little tests. If you've got any other tests that you want me to do, leave them in the comments down below because that helps me out because then I could just be like, right, this is what people want to see. Let's do this, let's get it tested and get it done. Um, there's a merch store down below if you want to purchase anything down below to help support the channel and everything like that. And also check out my channel, uh, Maxed Out Gaming. That's going to be in the link in the description down below if you want to go and check that out. And check out me gaming on mobile phone, or on PlayStation, Xbox or on PC. Because I need your comments to let me find out what games I should be playing on there, what you're really interested in. Anyway, and also after I built the computer and that, that's where I'll obviously test it to really game with it and stream and stuff. So you can ask me other questions down there. Discord's down the bottom as well. Anyway, love you all your faces. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Roger and out.